Hey, it's Kevin Lawn with the New Warehouse Podcast here at Promat 2023. I'm joined in the booth by Dan Gilmore and Mark Froelich of Softion. Uh, we've had Softion on the show previously uh, talking about their WMS, but we're going to talk today about the, the smart warehouse of the future. Uh, so welcome to the booth, guys. Welcome to uh, Promat Day 1 here. Um, how are you doing so far? Great, Kevin. Thanks for having us today. Definitely happy to have you guys both on here. Um, so give us like a quick little brief uh, overview of Softion and what it is you guys do. Sure. Well, we're a supply chain software company focused on supply chain execution. That would include things like warehouse management and newer warehouse execution systems and what we call distributed order management. Mm -hmm. But they have a whole suite of products, things like labor management, yard management, and uh, slotting optimization, things like that. And also now offering some breakthrough approaches to materials handling systems integration. All right, great, and that was that was definitely quick. I would say you, you rapid fired that. That was good. Uh, so, so obviously, you know, we're here uh, at Promat, and, and you know, one of the the big things I think is, is very apparent, obviously, is robotics everywhere. But at the at the core of what we do, uh, you know, software is needed and, and it's critical um, for for the warehousing. And, and the more components that we continue to add into our process flows and everything, uh, it is really important to be able to to continue to to grow and make sure that everything you know can work work together. So, so tell us a little bit about, uh, from uh, Softian's perspective, the, the smart warehouse of the future, and, and what does that mean to you guys? Yeah, sure. I'll try to summarize it up this, Dan. Uh, you know, the WMS industry has, at one level, remained fairly stagnant in terms of capabilities over the last 20 years or so. It's really been mostly incremental progress. But that's starting to change, and I think you're going to see some very profound transformation of warehouse operations to be more smart, to be more automated, and that's going to happen over the next two to five years. Mm. So, you know, you do have to start with the basics. So the kind of core WMS, the basics of receiving, put away, picking, replenishment, packing, shipping, et cetera. You've you got to be good at those things. And use advanced techniques like uh, uh, task, uh, task management and uh, uh, task interleaving and, mm. and you know, other kind of more advanced features. You have to have the core foundation in place to really get to the smart warehouse. But you can get beyond the basics that we've had for 20 years. So with WES, it offers an opportunity for a new set of smarts. And, and Gartner, mm. in their diagram of the, of the smart warehouse of the future, has right after outside of WMS in their drawing, has WES. And WES mm. does a lot of different things, but it provides a new level of optimization and or, um, orchestration of order fulfillment Right. That you just can't get from a traditional WMS. And one of the key things that really is happening here is that you can automatically release work based on a wide variety of attributes, things like order priority, things like mm -hmm. resource, uh, human resource and inventory availability, things like uh, optimization opportunities, things like carrier cutoff times. Right. And so the work can just automatically flow to the floor without a need for a wave planner without the need for expediters looking around for well, how do I get the inventory into the replenishment slots, without any of those things, as Gartner calls it the autonomous warehouse. Okay. And that's really what makes it the smart part, the smart right. part of the yeah. warehouse. But also we're seeing the trend, obviously, of significant growth and in interest in materials handling. Mm. So, so all you have to do is look at this show, the size of and the interest, all the robotic vendors, but it's more than just you know mobile robots. And so the need, and you kind of hit on this, Kevin, the need to right. tie all that together, what we think about as an any-to-any -any integration, any system to any system, uh, we've developed some technology to make that happen, and Mark's going to talk about it in just a second here, that really is going to make it a lot easier, faster, more agile integ uh, integration of these technologies and be able to do so flexibly over time. And so mm -hmm. the, the uh, integration stuff is a subset of the smart warehouse, but it's an increasingly important part of the smart warehouse, and we think we're going to see some you know, step change advances from what we've had in the past. Mm -hmm. Very interesting, yeah, and I think it's a, a, a great thing that, that you point out there, and you know, having these this additional uh, smarts, as you said, right, and, and being able to, to expand upon that, especially as we, we add so many different things in there, uh, is really critical um, to being sure, uh, making sure that you know we're able to you know add these things in, and, and then also you know make sure that the, everything's coordinating together. Um, so, you wanted to add something, Mark? Yeah, I think that. Um as you said, just by looking around, you see all this new technology. And fundamentally, this is all technology that wants to get to the floor. It's right. technology that wants to be on the floor. The vendors want it, the customers want it. And, and what we're trying to do right now is sort of remove the impedance, the mm. historical impedance to get that done because we're talking to different systems and talking different ways. And one robot vendor talks this way, one you know, um, GTP goods to person right. system talks this way. They have to all work together. And so our approach is to create sort of this dynamic data racetrack mm. where, you know, everybody can be 
you know, sending data in because you don't know who needs it, right? It's sort of like a little radio station of data, right? right? So, you know, it's a publish and subscribe sort of model where you know, can have an infinite number, number of subscribers and some of those can be interfaces, some of those can be, you know, um, you know, sending information out to AI systems that are helping yeah. coordinate. So it's not just the robots, it's, it's, you know, and the hardware, it's the things that are necessary to optimize those, as you pointed out, um, that could be an AI system or you know just analytics, but fundamentally, I think the big thing is that there's tech that wants to get to the floor, and that tech sometimes is frustrated by the <laughs> fact that there's these gates in the way, right. right? And and so it's frustrating for me as somebody that's saying, hey, it shouldn't be that hard to get it to the floor, yeah. you know, um, and it is, it shouldn't be, right? Mm -hmm. And so. What we're doing is creating a, a much more open way to do that and say, look, we don't care who you are, where you came yeah. from, how you speak, you know, different taxonomies, different, you know, delivery mechanisms. We have, you know, it's basically like switching from the old manual toll gates that used to, you know, a person would be there to oh, yeah. these automated, yeah, okay. you know, our inline um, um, transformation engines, like a an, uh, 90 mile an hour high speed, you know, tollway. Mm -hmm. Right, instead of those old-fashioned toll gates, you know, oh, you got this going this way, you got this going this way, and so it really opens it up, right? Because that yeah. technology wants to get to the floor, and somebody's going to get it there. It might as well be us helping the customer get it there. Yeah, it might as well, right? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, so I, I mean, it's a great thing because I, I think that, uh, like you said, I mean, there's so many different solutions going on yeah. and, and all these different things, and you know, it's not it's not like uh, you're going to go to to one company uh, for automation and uh, you're going to have all these different things, right? Yeah, you know, yeah, no, yeah, like you know, people look at AutoStore, which is a wonderful device. That's a right. you know little Minnie Mouse sort of thing that's you know doing stuff. Yeah. But at the end of that, totes come out, and either they're they're typically going to go on a conveyor someplace. So mm. that AutoStore is talking to like a WCS, which is controlling the conveyor system. Yeah. So now you have two systems involved, yeah. right? And so now it does not, and then maybe a robot's picking up at the end of the yeah. um, divert spots, and now you got three systems involved. And the big thing is creating the flow, right? To say, oh, the order got complete. Everybody can see that. Right. Now the now you can do lane selection. Pass that to the WCS. Now you can do a pickup from the. So mm -hmm. if you get a, a a racetrack of data that everybody can start to see everything, yeah. right? They can get in get in there and start to see the fact that, hey, I need to get a robot over there because in 30 seconds, mm -hmm. that divert confirm is going to hit and there's going to be a box sitting there that I need to pick up. So right. that's that's really the. You know, again, we're just trying to reduce the impedance because that tech does want to get to the floor. Oh, it yeah. does want to be more efficient. Yeah. We shouldn't, as humans, be the you know in different like silos of systems, be the guys yeah. that are stopping it, right? Yeah, yeah, I think that's a great point. I, I mean, you definitely don't want to uh, you know bring robots in to to help you you know be more efficient, and then you be the reason why you're not being. Yeah, you're at a toll gate. Yeah. You're on a toll gate with 50 cars back of you, right? You yeah, don't want yeah. that part. You want that <laughs> high speed throughput. Yeah. of like a modern tollway. Right? If I could just yeah. add one quick you know, comment. Sure, Dan. I mean, the the lack of that kind of capability is what is slowing down the ROI attainment of many mm. of these systems. So it's point. taking too long to get them up to speed. It's taking too long to get the flow the way that it needs to be to drive the ROI. Mm -hmm. And so this isn't just a technical matter about how do I talk to these things. It's about how do I get ROI for yeah. my investment. Right. And how, do I do, how do I get to that time to value more quickly? So that's the you know one of the business problems that's really being solved here to make it so that the ramp up is much more rapid and much more robust and much more agile to add new types of equipment and get up to speed with those as well. So that, that's really a key difference here. Yeah, like for instance, yeah. for us it would be you know defining a little configuration file, dropping it in a folder, and now you're talking to a new robot, right? Mm. It should be that easy, right? Because yeah. you shouldn't have all this, oh, you know, effort, we have to do this interface, and blah, 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 you know, that's the easy, interfaces are now the easy part of it, right? It's the coordination that's the harder part. Right. And to Dan's point, it's it's time to steadiness, mm. right? And it's time, it's how much time does it get to, to the point where you can handle, you know, uh, Black Friday, right? So right. those are the things that you measure, right? Because most of this automation is about scalability, right? And so you want it to be able to scale, you want it to, Dan's point, get up to that point fast, and again, my frustration is that all this tech wants to get into the field. Let's oh, yeah. help it get there, yeah. right? As opposed to being the impedance, we, we're not the old-fashioned toll gates anymore, right? Yeah, yeah. I think that's a great thing, and it's great that you guys are trying to uh, break that uh, toll toll down, I guess, yeah, right? And, exactly. And, I mean, so you know, obviously, people are, are coming here, and you know, coming pro mat, and, and I think probably a ton of people are probably coming and seeing like, how do we get in automation? So, what would you give them on the advice of the? the system side to, to make sure that they're also considering as well. 
Yeah, I think that the, the key thing about all of this, like, <clears throat> Whether you start with a just a RF based, you know, a mobile based um, warehouse or anything, mm -hmm. it's all about the flow, right? right? Because if you look at any warehouse system, you know, a good warehouse system does not look like it's working hard, right? Yeah. It looks like it's just, it looks like a duck, you know, in water. You know, underneath the ads, pad paddling yeah, away yeah, like yeah. crazy, it's going crazy, right? Yeah. But on top, it's smooth as silk, yeah. right? And so that's got to be the the case with any automation you add. It can't just be an adjunct, and then you're gonna like like you said, get to a toll booth, and you got all these packages. Yeah. backed up and so it has to be in the overall flow of what you want to achieve mm -hmm. right and um, that's that's really what happens is some people come in they tack on this and they tack on this and then they end up with a system that looks like it's been all tacked together right. so think about the flow make sure you're attacking the ROI from top down right because mm -hmm. it's easy to blur your ROI and say oh it'd be nice to do this and then we could do this no look hey what's your ROI for getting these bots in or getting this thing in right. attack that optimize that, then look for alternatives to expand your ROI footprint. All right, great information there and great advice. And and thank you guys so much for, for coming by the booth and talking to us about uh, Softion. If, if people want to find out more information about Softion, how can they do that? Well, if they're here, still here at the show, they can find us at booth uh, S3578, but Softion.com, S-O-F-T-E-O-N.com, and you'll find a lot of information about how we can help you out. All right. Thank you, Dan, and thank you, Mark, for coming by and, and giving us uh, this great information and also uh, this great advice, too, as I'm sure people are out here shopping, right? So uh, very good information, and, and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the show. Thanks for having us, Kevin.